All right, everyone, welcome to lecture 5-1. This lecture is gonna be a little bit more meat and potatoes of what you anticipate anatomy style classes are going to be like. We're just gonna cover the structures of the arm, uh, learn about their innervation, their irrigation, all of those things. So I'm just gonna quickly uh, move through this lecture on the arm and the forearm. Uh, so of course, uh, the fascia uh, that uh, covers the different areas of the body, the deep investing fascia, it changes its name based on where it is in the body. Uh, so uh, here in the arm, it's called brachial fascia. Uh, in the back, it was called the thoracolumbar fascia. Uh, so anyway, uh, just a quick note there. Uh, also note that the deep investing fascia does invest, uh, per its name, between the muscles. So it's what is separating one muscle from another. So that's how during dissection you'll be able to identify the different muscles. The uh, arm, uh, which is this part of the arm from the shoulder to the elbow, this is not the upper arm. This is the arm, the whole width of it. Upper arm would mean the shoulder region. Nobody says upper arm. And then below the elbow is forearm. So arm, forearm. The uh, compartments of the limbs uh, we uh, separate those into these individual compartments. So here in the arm, we have an anterior compartment and a posterior compartment. Anterior compartment uh, contains your flexor muscles. Uh, it's also innervated by musculocutaneous nerve. So uh, the arm is going to be a very easy topic here. Posterior compartment is your extensor compartment uh, innervated by radial nerve. So we can uh, separate these compartments and make these uh, rules about what innervates muscles in individual compartments to make studying this quite a bit easier. But as we'll see, we're going to break those rules on occasion and those are the things that you'll need to uh, study. So this is a... Um, uh, this is an MRI, actually, of the arm, and you can actually see, uh, based on this MRI, the different structures of the arms, including the intermuscular septa of the deep investing fascia and how those compartments uh, look in an actual uh, MRI of an arm. So just take a look at that, and then we go through the individual muscles and what their attachments are. So you can take a look at all of this information on your own. Uh, at, at a time of your choosing. Uh, so now take a look at the joints of the elbow. Of course, the elbow joint is a synovial uh, joint uh, with synovial fluid in it. So it has a joint capsule with thickenings called uh, collateral ligaments. Uh, in this case, there's a radial and an ulnar collateral ligaments and an annular ligament that wraps around the uh, head of the radius. So here we, so this previous view uh, that we looked at was a lateral view, as you can see based on the lateral epicondyle. So always orient yourself first to every picture and every structure you see. Figure out which direction you're looking at it from before you start trying to identify uh, individual structures. And so now we have a medial view and we can see the ulnar collateral ligament and the annular ligament wrapping around the head of the radius still. So it's important to take note of how the neurovasculature travels through this joint. Uh, we'll see a median nerve traveling right through the middle of that joint on the top part in the anterior compartment. We'll see the ulnar nerve coming off of the brachial plexus going through the ulnar groove uh, next to the olecranon process. Uh, so that's on the medial side. On the uh, lateral side, we'll see the radial nerve traveling uh, fairly superficially, and it will give off branches, a superficial and a deep branch there in the lateral portion of the forearm. And then just naming the internal components, also take note of the interosseous membrane, which forms the radial ulnar joint. So this is critical in keeping those two bones in your forearm together, as you uh, supinate and pronate. So supination is this direction with the hand up as if you're holding a bowl of soup. Uh, and pronation is the hand facing down as if you are a pro basketball player dribbling the ball. So one uh, clinical correlate to make note of here in relation to the annular ligament of the joint is that subluxation or um, movement of the head of the radius uh, past that annular ligament 
means that that annular ligament is going to get trapped between the, um, the humerus and the head of the radius. Uh, and this is sometimes referred to as nursemaid's elbow. Uh, so it can, be ha it can occur when uh, you know, the uh, forearm is rotated and extended, pulled uh, away from the trunk. Uh, so that can happen in any number of instances, like a kid falling out of a tree and grabbing a branch, uh, things like that, also cause of uh, the nursemaid's elbow, as it's referred. So now let's take a look at the compartments of the forearm. Again, we're going to have an anterior compartment and a posterior compartment. Here, the anterior compartment, I'm dividing up into additional subcompartments, a superficial layer and a deep layer. So the anterior compartment in the forearm is going to be primarily innervated by the median nerve because the median nerve runs right through the center of the forearm. However, there are exceptions noted here with the asterisk uh, and that those muscles are innervated by the ulnar nerve. So you can take a look at that more closely. Uh, I'm highlighting those areas here uh, and we can see the individual muscles of the anterior compartment of the forearm. So an easy way to remember the superficial group is uh, to uh, take your uh, left hand, hold out your right forearm, and in the webbing between your thumb and your index finger, put that over the medial, uh, the, the medial epicondyle of your humerus. And then the way your fingers naturally lie uh, resembles the directionality of the forearm muscles. And then you can just remember uh, those individual muscles uh, using a mnemonic or, or whatnot. Uh, moving on through to the deeper compartment, uh, you can see those are much deeper. Uh, they are uh, attaching uh, to various parts of these, uh, the radius and ulna, but also the uh, interosseous membrane between those. So they'll have attachment points along the interosseous membrane. So now let's take a look at the posterior compartment of the forearm. All of these, without exception, are innervated by the radial nerve. The radial nerve is the only nerve that's running through the posterior compartment of the forearm. These are all uh, extensors. Uh, and uh, again, I'm separating them up into uh, individual compartments. And in this case, the compartments are based on um, their location as well as their attachment point. So you can take a look at that and group those mentally. The radial group is the most lateral. Uh, those are all attaching to the lateral uh, humerus. On the, uh, the superficial layer uh, of the posterior compartment attaching to the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. And then the deeper layer is again attaching near that interosseous membrane. <clears throat> so here are those individual muscles and their vectors. So we can move through those. You can study those of your own accord. And now let's talk about the cubital fossa. So the cubital fossa is uh, that region uh, of your arm, the, the anterior joint of the elbow joint, the anterior portion of that elbow joint. And there are some critical structures that pass through the cubital fossa. So the cubital fossa is defined by some uh, boundaries here. And the boundaries are the medial uh, boundary of pronator teres and the uh, lateral border of brachioradialis. Uh, the the uh, super, superior boundary is an imaginary line drawn between the medial and lateral epicondyles of the humerus. Within this region, the superficial structure that you're going to find is the median cubital vein. That is the location where the cephalic and the basilic vein anastomose. So this uh, median cubital vein is the mainstay for phlebotomists that uh, draw blood. Uh, so you've had your blood drawn, I'm sure they stick a needle right into this region because these veins are very easy to identify and see through the skin. Uh, but there are also extensive variations. Uh, so every uh, medial cubital um, median cubital vein is a little bit different. Some travel uh, from superior uh, to lateral, some travel from lateral to inferior, uh, etc, etc. But another important uh, reason why phlebotomists uh, enjoy uh, uh, 
drawing from this area is that it, because the deeper structures are well protected, the bicipital aponeurosis, which is the uh, distal attachment point for biceps brachii muscle, is a very thick, flat, broad uh, tendon uh, that covers the brachial artery. So as that um, brachial artery travels through this region of the anterior arm to the forearm, it travels deep to the bicipital aponeurosis. So a phlebotomist, uh, if, they tra if they puncture through the median cubital vein, uh, have a very uh, low likelihood or chance of puncturing into the artery, the brachial artery that's deep to bicipital aponeurosis because that aponeurosis shields that artery. <clears throat> so here if we reflect the bicipital aponeurosis and some other muscles in that region, we get to see how the brachial artery is going to branch into the ulnar and the radial artery. And we'll also see the median nerve as it travels deep through that section as well. The biceps brachii tendon is going to travel uh, deep uh, to those structures to attach to the, uh, the radial tuberosity. And then in this picture, you can also see the radial nerve traveling deep to this lateral group of muscles, traveling deep to brachioradialis. So uh, take a look at how that brachial artery branches and continues into the forearm and travels down into the forearm as the radial and ulnar arteries. And then uh, in a subsequent lecture, we're going to um, need to know in depth the arches of these arteries, the palmar arches within the hand. So that's coming very quickly too. Okay, thank you very much.